Mandalore the Ultimate was possibly the most prominent leader that the Mandalorians ever followed, and completely changed the way the Mandalorians' military functioned. But who exactly is Mandalore the Ultimate? Mandalore the Ultimate story starts where Mandalore the Indomitables ends. After his death on Onderon's jungle moon, Ultimate found his body and took his mask as his own. Now, Mandalore the Ultimate was a skilled warrior, particularly been amassed over a basilisk war droid, and he used the lethal moon where Mandalore the Indomitable had died as a training ground for his new warriors. However, the Great Sith War had cost his people dearly. When this new Mandalore called for the support of the clans, there was merely a fraction of their previous numbers remaining. Luckily, a group naming themselves the Neo Crusaders had begun to emerge. These were a group dedicated to order and structure in the military, and believed that Mandalorians should gain from war as opposed to merely lose lives. It's for this reason Mandalore began to look for recruitment off-world and with different species. Rodians, Twi'leks, and even deadly Mandalian giants were all welcomed into the ranks of Mandalore's Neo Crusaders. Over time, Mandalorian became less of a species and more of a culture, a way to live, a choice. The Mandalorians grew exponentially as they began invading numerous worlds around the Outer Rim. With every world, their ranks expanded due to conscription. They also gained a huge economic boost due to slave labour, as well as seizing factories and territories, etc. Despite this looming threat, the Republic refused to become involved. The Mandalorians were attacking Outer Rim territories that weren't part of the Republic, and therefore they refused to become involved in another war so shortly after the Great Sith War. However, the intervention of the Sith would soon stop this uneasy peace. A pure-blood Sith, claiming to be the emissary of a powerful Sith Lord in the Unknown Regions, secretly the Emperor of the Hidden Sith Empire, convinced Mandalore to help him find an ancient Sith tomb. Mandalore indulged, likely curious to find out more of these Sith, either to become allies or a new enemy to attack. The Dark Side Emissary used Sith sorcery to cloud Mandalore's mind, giving him a vision of making war with the Republic and winning, a galaxy ran by the Mandalorians. However, this was secretly a ploy by the Sith Empire to test the Republic's strength and weaken the Republic in preparation for their return. Mandalore saw this as a prophecy and began readying his armies to attack the Republic. Now, Mandalore the Ultimate was a warrior first. It's for this reason he appointed his lieutenant, Cassius Fett, to lead his strategies. This allowed him to take part much more personally in the war. Mandalore led his armies to the very edge of Republic space. Here he began sacking worlds, including Cathar, where the entire Cathar species was almost wiped out in a brutal campaign by Mandalore the Ultimate. It's also here where Revan made a vow to end the Mandalorian menace. Eventually, the Republic was forced to involve itself when the Mandalorians invaded the world of Taris. Not due to moral obligation, however, but the significant financial investment the Republic had made in the world. However, the Republic struggled to stand against the overwhelming forces of the Mandalorians under their new leader. Their numbers and resources had grown exponentially. Meanwhile, the Republic was woefully unprepared for the war, and the majority of the Jedi, aside from a splinter group led by Revan, refused to become involved. Mandalore became infatuated with the prophecy of him ruling the galaxy. He even attempted to purchase weaponized exogorphs that could be sent to the far reaches of the galaxy to feed on anything in the vicinity, which would be a considerable weapon when dealing with enemy fleets. He even offered the company who manufactured them immunity for when the Mandalorians completed their conquest, and that they would become the sole provider of all Mandalorian weapons and armor, which would be a great business arrangement for any company that managed to get this. However, the exogorphs became loose and the deal was soon ended. However, Mandalore was happy as they were loose in Republic space, causing further distraction for his enemies. The Republic believed Mandalore would act cautiously when striking at military targets that were situated near civilian populous areas such as cities, as his entire military model relied on recruitment of outsiders to grow. However, on the world of Sirocco, Mandalore proved them wrong by ordering several cities to be completely annihilated. This showed the galaxy that Mandalore had every intention to win, regardless of the cost. 
However, it was not meant to be. Although Mandalore expected Jedi intervention at some point, he did not expect the leadership of Revan. In control of the Republic's third army, Revan used the Mandalorian's own tactics against them, and Mandalore, overconfident from a slew of previous victories, began to be pushed back. It would all be decided in a battle on the world of Malachor V. Mandalore and Revan met in single combat, and Mandalore was defeated by the Jedi. In his fleeting moments, the illusion was broken, and Mandalore realised he was being used as a puppet by the Sith. His final words were to Revan, telling him of the strange Sith from the Unknown Regions. Now, the battle was not over, despite Mandalore's death. For this reason, the Republic used a device named the Mass Shadow Generator that would crush both the Mandalorians and Republic's fleets alike. However, the day was won for the Republic. The Mandalorians had lost, and without their leader, they fled back to the Outer Rim defeated. But what do you think of Mandalore the Ultimate and the Mandalorian Wars? Don't forget this entire week, Monday to Sunday, has been Mandalorian Week, with new videos every day on a different subject surrounding the Mandalorians, so make sure to go and check all those out and have the bell tick to stay up to date. Also, don't forget to like, sub and share if you did enjoy, as it really helps the channel grow and is greatly appreciated. And follow me on Twitter at the Guy for regular updates. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.